and welcome along to another episode of our weekly quiz, You're the Ref. No, Craig, you're the ref. No, Charlie's the ref. <laughs> not, not a very good one. No. <laughs> if we're basing it on the last month or so, Charlie is not the referee any football team wants. Can I However, just want to jump in? This thing with the hair pulling stuff, I was backed by the public. So I, technically I won that episode. I I, in my head, that's a win, but it was bollocks. That's all I do know. But anyway, go on. Me, me and, and Keith and, agreed. And due to the rules of this lockdown, it's going to become a serious issue when football does eventually return, if it does come before barbers open. So, <laughs> <there you go. laughs> anyway, so yes, yeah, if it, I, I'm not a very good ref, we've established that. However, the tide is going to turn today, I can feel it. The seeds we of survival, will... Charlie, the seeds of survival. This exactly, the seeds of survival. So if I, if I remember rightly, Craig is unbeaten in four and won three of those, drawn the other, which I believe was last week, if I remember yes. rightly. Yes, it was. Uh, for anyone who hasn't watched so far, each week we give Craig and Charlie three awkward refereeing scenarios relating to a particular footballing player or personality and ask them what they would do if they were the ref. Now, this book is, this series, sorry, is based on the book You Are the Ref, which is a, a very good book. Unfortunately, we've had some troubles by trying to give public pub, uh, positive publicity even to the author and the illustrator. But the most important thing is that you lads have got to agree with Keith Hackett, who is the referee giving the answers, not Howard Webb, who has signed the book and told us that he's the World Cup final referee. <laughs> now these lads are picking a page number each week and Craig has gone for page number 29. Yes, I did. Ooh. <laughs> Craig, you have picked not only a former footballer, not only a man in which the hair pulling scenario could relate to, but also a current football presenter. Oh, is it Gary Lineker? It's not Gary Lineker. Oh. That man, Craig Savage, is not as good. It is Jimmy Bullard. <laughs> oh, okay, very good. Okay. Right. Great play. Jimmy Bullard. Is he then? We've got hey, some... It... The boat who did it should have been sent off, but anyway, we'll move on. Well, well Charlie, that's gone now. That's gone. <laughs> there you it go. has gone. <laughs> We've got some illustrations of whole City shirts. We've got a rather awkward-looking kick, which I think may appear in one of the scenarios. And we've also got a picture of the ball in the shirt, you know, like the baby celebration. So I'm interested to see what's coming along here. Just really quickly, what's the uh, illustration like of Jimmy Bullard? Because oh, you know, very good, very features. good. Ah, okay. Have very you come across a bad one yet, or not really? Uh, Bakary Sanya, we had, didn't we? It was a, oh, yes. a bit of a dodgy one. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, they've generally been pretty good. And David, to be fair, David Moyes was a bad one. No, David Moyes was all right. Jimmy Bullard is sharing a page with Ryan Giggs, which isn't the greatest. Oh. <laughs> Um, but generally, they've been very good, so we've got to be right. fair on that front. So, these are the three scenarios allegedly relating to James Richard Bullard. Let's see how many you can get right. Number one, a striker is impeded outside the penalty area, so you'll signal an indirect free kick. Okay? Indirect free kick you've given. The striker springs up and takes it quickly, deliberately knocking the ball against the defender who fouled him who is Ooh. still lying on the floor in front of the free kick position. You then hammer the, re uh, the striker, sorry, then hammers the rebound into the net once it ricochets off that defender. What do you give? Is it a goal or is that an infringement of oh. the law? Craig Savage and Charlie Betts. It's a tough one. Hmm. Uh, you, you know, you talk about this series being tricky situations. We have another one here today. Um, I don't know, because obviously famously Dean Saunders took a throw in, didn't he? he yeah, off. I was just about to say that, Dean Saunders. Back. However, he wasn't on the floor. He was running back to position. Um, I don't know if this comes back to our favourite saying, which is on gentlemanly conduct. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, 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 I agree, to be honest. It, it's the same question again, isn't it? Is this a moral issue or is this a legal issue? Well, that's the thing. I mean, technically, if the bloke was stood up and just walking away, he hasn't done anything wrong. I don't know if he has. Is it because the defender who's impeded him is lying on the floor that it then becomes an issue? I don't know. This is a tough one. My heart's I, I, telling you ungently conduct and you have to go back. But then what do you do? How do you restart the game? Do you go back do, to do, the... do referees just go, oh, no, 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 no. As I say, I'm, obviously, I oh, know you the question. Be, you're the ref, you make the decision. But you, uh, some referees will just blow up and just say, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. But quite a lot's happened. Because you, you can't... You can, and had a shot and scored. So that's quite I'm a pretty, long period of time. I'm pretty sure you can only take a quick one that's a direct one. Now, let me, let me just ask you something here, lads, because you're, you're obviously jumping very quickly ahead here. Is It doesn't matter that some referees would and some referees wouldn't. We know that. 
That's why it's in this book, because it's a rare and controversial scenario. What I want to know is what is the letter of the law and therefore what is what, what are you going to do? I don't know if this is right, and I, I, it doesn't really make sense, but it's the only answer I've got is I think, unfortunately, it's unsporting behaviour or whatever the term is, and therefore you have to retake the free kick. No calves this time, Craig. Okay. But I, I think, but I don't know why, I, I can't see any other way apart. The only other option is that you play on and allow the whole thing to go ahead. But for me, I think there's a moral and legal issue there, and therefore you've got to bring it back. Craig Savage, do you agree or disagree? Um, I, I think you can't. I don't think it's a goal. I really don't. Um, because, I, well, no, I, I don't think it's a goal. I don't think it's a goal. I, I would like some reasoning, <laughs> please, Craig. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with Charlie's point of it being a moral point of view. And um, they, obviously, there's no time for, uh, obviously, the, the defenders to get up if the player's taking it quickly. But no, if, no I, can't, I can't see it being a goal. But knowing Keith, he's probably say, yeah, goal, go for it. Let's carry on and start again. Well, we have agreement. Craig Savage and Charlie Betts both say it is not a goal. Now, I mentioned this, I think, last week and the week before. <laughs> One of the things that's most important when we're going through these scenarios is you've got into this habit, both of you, of trying to find an awkward, convoluted answer instead <laughs> of sticking to your basic principles of refereeing, which will make you right most of the time. So, what are the two most important things about a free kick and a player lying on the floor? For the free kick, it is to, it is to penalise the defensive team and to benefit the attacking team. What is the important thing about the player lying on the floor? Are they injured and needing treatment or are they not? If both of those are no, then the goal stands. Keith Hackett has given the goal. If you are satisfied the defender on the floor is not injured and the player taking the free kick has positioned the ball correctly, which is the other bit neither of you mentioned I was looking for, then, the, then play on. The attacking team should not be penalised for a quick free kick. Allow the goal to stand. Very simple. Injures him kicking the ball at him. Well, you know, again, the Dean Saunders thing you both alluded to, the goal was given. It's no different, yeah, really. If the player's not injured. Yeah, I don't know why that has changed that since then. Away. But the rule, the rule obviously hasn't changed since then, Greg. That, well, that, what happened there was obviously before this book came out. And I swear the rule's changed since then. But I, well, I totally disagree from it. Totally disagree because I, I know it would just all kick off. That. But then surely... With the greatest respect, Craig, as soon as any free kick is given in any match, you just get one of your players to do a salmon dive onto the floor and no free kick can ever be taken. No yeah. throw it, no corner, nothing. Nothing well, will ever be think, taken. Just go think, oh, down on the floor. Why, why do you think, obviously, people just like try to block the free kicks anyway? But, and, but then they get booked for it, don't they? Because that exactly. was one of our questions a few weeks ago. Exactly. So, yeah, I, I totally disagree with Keith. I can see why Keith said it. I, I think, like Craig said, I think where we're getting confused is we're probably thinking of local football as the one, one of the only official there, if you did that and let it stand, you're going to get pelters and all manner of abuse in, in Sunday morning football. And therefore, our go-to thing is, right, let's just bring it back and that'll keep everyone quiet. But by the letter of the law, obviously, that was the right thing to do. I can see why, but I can also see how it could cause a, a ton of trouble if you did let the goal stand. I mean, I yeah, think, I think you, becoming... I think it's going to happen in, in... Well, obviously, I know it's VAR, but I think even in higher up, this it will still happen like that. I think what's abundantly clear from your answers is that both of you are defensive-minded players and don't want to concede goals. But the objective of the game, a bit like that skillful free kick we had a couple of weeks ago with the one or two touch, the letter of the law actually generally is there to benefit attackers, particularly the same as offsides. It's just, as you mentioned, it's not always applied consistently. But anyway, yep. on to number two, with the score at a rather shocking nil-nil after a relatively straightforward one by the letter of the law. <laughs> Missed an open goal there, I think. For once. Uh, and I've been I so infuriated, I forgot to turn the book back round. So, number two. The ball breaks loose in the away team's penalty area. One player from either team lunges in high to get it, with both feet off the ground. So, one player from each team, both have both feet off uh, the ground. I can see where this is going already. Neither makes contact with the ball. Both make contact with each other. <laughs> the crowd shouts for a penalty because obviously the home team are in the penalty area. Both sets of players surround you, which obviously now should be dishing out a lot of yellow cards. But what are you going to do? Oh, I should have taken think, that I think, a minute ago. That was a I lot think, easier. I think oh. I have an answer. Okay. Obviously, oh. for this book, I, I'm going to say drop ball. Okay. He's going to drop ball. 
because it's not a foul for it's actually technically it is a foul for both sides. It's both reckless challenges. You could technically both both book both players for the reckless challenges. But um it's, but it's not it's it's a it's a foul it'd be very harsh to give one way because of both so the, the same. There's another issue here, Craig. Obviously you've given me half of your answer, which is fine, but the other half of the answer that I have to press you for is what are you going to do with the two players involved said, in the look, instant? Well, if they're both reckless challenges, you've got to book them at least. Both re- you're, so you're deeming both challenges reckless and you're giving two yellow cards? Yeah. Okay. Craig, Charlie, and uh, a drop best. ball. And a drop ball. Um, and a drop ball. I, I, all this niggling in the back of my head, it might have been one of the earliest weeks we did this, or maybe uh, there was one where there was two defenders who brought down an attacker at the same time, more or less, or something like that. Uh, do you remember that scenario? Weeks yeah. and weeks. And it was all about which one you fought caught in first. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. But that's they did it at the same point, time. But I don't know if that would apply here. And given the, the thing of what Dan was saying earlier about uh, complicating stuff, I don't know if I'm now going to give another complicated answer, but I think as a referee, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Do you go with which one you went for, made contact first and do it that way? But they're both dangerous tackles, aren't they? Yeah. Um, they're both pissed and ball, though. I can't see how it's a drop ball, though. I just can't see that. I think, I'm going to put my neck on the line here. I think it might be wrong, but I'm going to, I'm, uh, this is what I would do. I think you go by the one you think hit, hit the other one first and give a foul or penalty, whichever way it is, that way. And you would have to... Uh, oh, what do you do with him? Do you send him off? Is it a dangerous play? I mean, if it's a two-footer, you might even have to send both of them off. Oh, I don't so, know. Charlie, of the seven options you've just given, which, <laughs> which are you going to go for? No, no. I tell you what, I think Craig might be right. I'm going to go drop ball, but send both of them off. OK. So you've both gone for drop ball. Yep. And one's gone for two yellows, one's gone for two reds. Now, you haven't got there by applying the basic rules of refereeing again, but one of you has got the correct answer in terms of the cards. And oh, even Keith hasn't given you a definite answer in terms of the next restart of play. So let me explain. Fuck's first sake, and Keith. foremost, first and foremost, and always important with Keith, act quickly and decisively. We don't want this dragging on, do we? Now, this is where Charlie's right. If you decide that both of these challenges off the floor lunges are usually more than reckless, they are excessive force and endangering a player's safety, then you have to show two red cards. Because if you believe it is a red card offence, you have to give it still. It doesn't matter if both players have done it at the same time. So two red cards, correct answer. However, your next decision is how do you restart play? And it's sort of the conversation that you both have. Who was the most guilty? If you believe it to be the defender, you award a penalty. If you believe it's the attacker, you award a direct free kick. If you really can't decide, you restart with a drop ball. Oh, fuck. <laughs> however, right, both wrong at the same time. However, to help you get the right decision, you need to be well positioned with a good viewing angle. Whatever you give, you're not going to be po- the most popular person on the field of play. So show courage. One of the key qualities of any top referee, as Keith would know very well. <laughs> really got courage in her answer. Fucking hell. Like, well, I tell you what, that is a around that answer, and then you put me off of it by going, "Just can you give me one of the seven possibilities?" But I literally said what he said. It was it was quite a uh, political answer from Keith there. But the most important thing is Charlie got to the right decision of two red cards. And although you both got one of the right options, I have to give Charlie the point for that because he got the correct decision in terms of the players. So, Craig must get the third scenario right or he is going to lose for the first time in five. This is is pressure. This is what we're here for. It's like a penalty in a playoff final. (laughs) This is a World Snooker Championship final, Craig. You're on the final black. Have you got the balls? Let's have a look. (laughs) No, they're on the table. (laughs) Number three. And we start with one of my favourite phrases of the book so far. A cunning striker, waiting for a high looping ball to drop, decides to tuck his shirt out of his shorts and using both hands, stretch it out like a blanket to cushion the ball. Ooh. It works. Oh. The ball drops to his feet and he plays on. Can like you that. intervene? I like that. So he's not handballed it, but he's it's used not... the hands to get his shirt. I genuinely don't know the answer to this, so I'm looking forward to your accounts. I can't, I can't see my fucking wrong with this. Um, <laughs> I, see, the other way, I can't see how you can allow that. For what? 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 For? what yeah. I don't know if that counts. Is that unsporting behaviour? I can't see how you can pull your shirt out 
And Cap's well, could you have seen it loads of times? I mean, he hit his that's hand. Scenario. That's the sort of thing he would do. Fairly that's fairly. my immediate thought again, is you would have seen this loads if it was allowed. Yeah, true. I haven't seen um, it live. Um, ooh. I, I, I don't. I think, I think you have to... I don't know, is it direct or indirect free kick? But I think you have to... Who is free kick? Is it, uns- you... Unsupporting behaviour or something like that. Ungentlemanly conduct. <laughs> no, see, I think that's different, isn't it? That's when you... Well, like... How's that not un- ungentlemanly conduct? No, but it, is it, well, it's is certainly it... not the behaviour of a gentleman, in fairness to Craig, is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't think of the term. I, I know what I mean. It's like unsupporting behaviour or ungentlemanly conduct or something like that. Yeah, that's not a term, by the way, in the modern game. We still call it ungentlemanly, considering there's like a whole women's game and stuff now. So is that where unsupporting behaviour comes from? I don't think yeah, the think laws so. are picked up, to be honest. Let's be honest. Um, for me, you've got to stop the game, give either a couple of direct or indirect free kick. It might be an indirect free kick. And or... you're given a yellow, or are you just saying no, no, unsupporting behaviour? No, just... no? No, but just unsporting behaviour. But everyone will have a bit of a laugh. I'm sure Keith will mention something about, you know, you could have a little chuckle, but, you know, it's not allowed. I'm like sure um, Craig at this point is going to intervene with some cards, are you? Um, or are you just going to let it all go on, Craig? What? <laughs> you look genuinely flabbergasted by this. That was his I am. Answer. I am. Uh, my original thought is, I think that's very clever, but then it, uh... But it might be clever, Craig, but is it allowed? That's what I want to know. <laughs> We all score with our shirt, like it hits our chest, it counts as hitting the shirt, it goes in. Um, it counts. Um, oh, bloody hell. I'm gonna, fuck's sake. Um, I think I've lost this, this, lost this week, to be honest, guys. I, I'm not gonna lie. If I, um, we could tie it. I could it's tie a, it. It's amazing how your personality changes when you lose the air of invincibility as you appear to have <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm calling two minds. I would give the goal. Or you uh, disallow the goal, you book the player, and you give a. You, no, yeah, because it's deliberate. If you're going to get it, then was accounts a deliberate handball. Um, but which one is it, Craig? <sighs> you, got that, you got that coin again? No, you've been stalling for nearly three minutes. No, now, I, want so I, want I want the coin. I want the coin. You're not having the coin. No, because I've, I've made my two decisions. I want the coin. Okay, but unfortunately, I can't reach the coin without lift going out of camera shot. So <laughs> that's not going to make for a good episode. <laughs> all right, all right, okay, okay. I'm going to give a free kick to the op- a direct, indirect free kick to the op- uh, to the, the defending team and book the player for a deliberate handball. So I'm wrong. Charlie, I so both of you have <laughs> both of you have agreed the play shouldn't continue. You've got to intervene. One of you is giving simply a free kick and one of you is producing a yellow card. We're sort of different offences. He's saying handball. Mine's like unsupported behaviour, whatever the term is. Well, as as you'll see in a minute, that's going to become irrelevant. The key is whether it's a card or not. Oh, fuck. So, (laughs) I can confirm that Craig is now five episodes unbeaten <laughs> because the yellow oh, card is coming out. Yes. The yellow card. Fucking Neil Hackett <laughs> loves it as much as Craig. Oh, bloody hell. Why did you book everyone? That's a wall. Funny bit of skill. It was illegal. It was fun. Fuck why did you not see it today? Why did you not see it in today's game? This is, this is why Charlie's going to be even more annoyed. So, yes, you stop the game. You don't let him play on. The player is guilty of unsporting behaviour. So that means you must stop the play and issue a caution. Unsporting behaviour is an offence that demands a yellow card. That's a, However, um, that's a C1 in the, uh, in the uh, referee's book. <laughs> Just saying. Yes. I can't confirm or deny. Anyone wants to confirm or disagree in the comments, let us know. However, Craig, you mentioned something else that popped up in this answer. You could argue that the player, is using, in using his shirt like this to cushion the ball, is guilty of a deliberate handball. Restart the play with a direct free kick, but oh. it's irrelevant. Obviously, it's in the defending half. But yeah. very important that Craig Savage got the yellow card and Charlie, despite sort of getting closer on the offence, yeah, then did. ignored the instincts that the offence, he said, is guilty of a yellow card. I didn't realise every time. That, that's, that's ridiculous. That's a way of drumming up funds <laughs> for the <laughs> local FA. That's all that is. That's bullshit. I'm sorry. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be as harsh on you normally, Charlie, but you are the one of the two of you that's done the refereeing course. And, you know, <laughs> I have to take that into account. 17 years ago, and I did it for like nine months. Now, I, do you know what I'm surprised at? Is that there's no application of common sense there. That, you know, it was a bit of fun. He's obviously tried to be cunning, as Keith has rightly said. 
I don't know. I think if that was local football, you wouldn't get booked for that. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, Charlie. If you was a manager and you played dead down and got a second yellow, you'd be screwing. Oh, you would be, but that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's a yellow card. But anyway, well, it is. I, think you're, I think you're both ignoring the fact that as a footballer, there is absolutely no need to do that, and anyone well, no, can see no. it's morally wrong. So you know, I would I, what I would be doing if your player got a second yellow for that is having a bloody word with him. But you know, <laughs> there we go. That's the final thought of the day. If you did enjoy this episode, please do put a thumbs up on it. We do appreciate your support. Uh, subscribe to the channel for regular content from the podcast, including Charlie's coaching series our interview series with footballing personalities and this silly quiz as well, including a few other specials on the channel too. You can give us a follow on Twitter at Honest Football 3 to keep up to date. And I'm sure you'll see us again the same time next week with another player or personality, the scapegoat for Charlie's defeat. A draw this time, grade five unbeaten. Will it be six next time? Hey, hey, hey to be honest, Charlie's two unbeaten now. That's positives. <laughs> that is a positive. Accentuate the positives. <laughs> Craig's favourite catchphrase, I apologise. Craig is five unbeaten. Charlie is also two unbeaten. Hopefully you'll join us next week to find out which one's unbeaten record goes. Mm-hmm.